Hey guys, hope you all had a really good week. This is part two of my HP Pro Desk 400 SMPS troubleshooting. You may remember last week we were in a position where this power supply was starting up and then immediately shutting down. So I had verified that we had what looked like a stable DC voltage on our main filter capacitor which verified that pretty much all of our input section and bridge rectifier was good. But our oscillation circuit for driving the main transformer that seemed to be starting up and immediately shutting down. Uh, standby voltage was good but when we press the power button it comes on and shuts down straight away. So as part of m what I was hypothesizing at the end of last week as opposed to what might be the cause of this I suggested that this TNY277PG which we took at a look at at the end of last week's video this could be faulty. So just to get it out of the way I decided I would get a good one of these which I had from a spare power supply which was known to be good and I swapped it in. So I swapped it in and have a guess what happened. Yep of course the exact same thing happened. This fault has nothing to do with our TNY277PG but I've swapped in a new one so at least we can rule that out and move on to the next uh, possible cause. In case it's of use to somebody else or possibly to me later on, I have another one of these power supplies and I took down the voltages across that power IC uh, just to compare them. So just to revise the values we had on the faulty PSU, it, when it was switched off we had 3 10 volts between drain and source right here. We had essentially 0 0.9 volts on our enable pin and we had 6.29 volts on the BP pin right here. Now when I press the power on the drain to source voltage went up to 360 and immediately back to 310 volts. The enable seemed to flicker but pretty much stayed at 0 0.878 or 9, 0 0.9 volts again. And the BP pin stayed on 6.29 volts throughout. All right. On my working PSU, when it was switched off, the drain to source voltage was roughly 310 volts. The enable pin was 0 0.904 volts, my BP pin was 6.23 volts. However, when I pressed the power button on the working PSU, my drain to source went to 370 volts, that's from here to here, and it stayed at that as long as the power supply was switched on. My enable pin went from 0 0.904 volts up to 0 0.970 volts and stayed at that until I powered it off, and my BP pin was pretty much at 6.23 volts throughout. So th those are the voltages on a good PSU compared to the voltages on the one I'm working on at the moment. So hopefully that will be of some use. Having established that the issue is not with our power IC, I decided I would take a look at our secondary power rails to see if there was a short or any issue on these. Okay. So the way this works is the, the hot side drives the primary side coils in our transformer transformers across here and the voltage in the primary side the AC voltage in the primary side induces a voltage in our secondary side which is then rectified using diodes now those diodes usually come in a package that looks something like this okay three pin diodes where you've got a package that has there's one diode from here to here and then one diode from here to here. Okay, so we can see similar three pin packages here. But what we want to do is we want to first of all locate where our different voltage rails are because it's it's difficult to see it amongst this here. But one way that we can do this is to look up our 24 pin chart, which I have right here. And this shows us which color wire corresponds to which voltage rail. So what I've done is I have overlaid the front of the board onto this board and imaged it so that they're, you know, mirror imaged it and moved it around so that we can see the other side of where the cable on the front side goes. You'll see what I'm talking about in a second. But our orange wire is our 3.3 volt. Our red wire is our 5 volt. Purple wire, which we suspect to be good, is our 5 volt, and then our 12 volt is the yellow wire. Okay, so we need to locate those where they come in. Now I can see where a number of the big wires from the front side come through here. 
but we don't know which ones these correspond to. However, when I overlay the board front side, we can see where they are right there. So if I go and I say, okay, look, that's my purple wire, so it goes to the board about here. So that is where it comes through right here. So I can recognize that as my five volt standby. And when I look at the path that that takes, I follow that back and I see that it comes to this diode right here. So these three legs here are for this diode. This is actually a standby transformer, which is separate to our main transformer. But look, we know this part is working anyway, so we don't really need to troubleshoot it much. But just for clarity, that's my five volt standby where my purple wire comes through. And this is the path that it takes on the board back to my diode. Okay. So next, we're going to look for our 3.3 volts. So from the front of the board, we locate our orange cable. Our orange cable comes through the board around, I think that's it right here. So then on the other side of that board, we can see that it comes to here. So I'm going to mark that as 3.3 volts. And I couldn't find the full path of that. I could just see it going back to here. It doesn't seem to have its own separate diode. But we won't worry about that for the moment. But that's where our 3.3 volt cable comes through. So next, we want to see where our 5 volt line is. So our 5 volt is red. So we can see right here, the red wire comes down and in about here. Which corresponds to this point on the other side of the board. So this is our 5 volt rail right here. I'm going to mark that in. And then we can work back right here. I this is, did this with a continuity mode with the diode. Uh, sorry, continuity mode with my multimeter. And what I find is that that comes back to here. So there's actually two of these double diodes. But that's the path it takes over to here. And that's our 5 volt rail. So we've just one to go. Our 12 volt rail, which is our yellow wire. So we can see right here, our yellow wire comes through the board at this point. So on the back side of the board, that's this point right here. So we're going to mark that as 12 volt. And I then trace that back, first of all, to this resistor right here. If you've been watching my other videos, you'll know what this is. Yes, it's a current sense resistor. And from there, it goes back to this diode right here. So as you can see with these ATX power supplies, having a colored wire plugged into your motherboard makes it really, really easy to identify you know, where each of the voltage rails is. You don't normally have this on a TV or anything else, but it's just a guide to where each of the voltage rails are. But what I need to do next is check each of these voltage rails individually and see if there are any problems with each of these. What I'm looking for here is to see maybe is there a short on one of these that is causing the primary uh, pulse width modulation I see to shut down. So the first step is of course to get our multimeter and switch it into diode mode which as we've seen before is, looks something like this. And with it in diode mode what we need to do is place our red probe to ground. Now I've identified the ground planes as here and here. We place our red probe to ground and get our black probe and we're going to just take them one by one. So in diode mode on the 5 volt rail I measure 0 0.066 volts. Okay so that's certainly not shorted anyway. That seems okay. So next on my 12 volt rail I place my probe here, and on my 12 volt rail, I measure 0 0.066 volts also. On my 3.3 volts rail, which we've identified as being here, I place my black probe right here, and I find that there's 0 0.39 volts on this. And finally, in standby. Now we have a pretty good idea that our standby voltage is good, um, but when I place my probe right here, I get 0 0.073 volts which also seems that it's okay so we certainly don't have any shorts on our secondary power rails we verified that there's no shorts on our secondary output voltage rails 
but that doesn't necessarily mean that our diodes are fully working. You may remember I pointed out that our diodes were here, 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 and here. Um, so I decided that I would pull these out of the board and just test them to make sure that they were, f you know, that none of the junctions were open. We know that none of them are short because none of the rails are coming up as short, but we don't know for sure that, you know, maybe one of the diodes in the two diode package might be open. So if I take this one, for example, I'll just show you how I did one. So this one right here, I desolder this one from the board. It's one of these TO220 packages that looks like this. I've stamped on it the actual model number of the one that is right here for our 12 volt rail. So as you can see on the front of it, they have marked what the package is all about. So between here and here is one diode junction and between here and here is another diode. So what we need to do to test these is to place our red probe right here, place our black probe right here, and we should see a diode junction. Now when I did that, I got 0 0.066 volts. Does that seem familiar? Well, of course it does, because that's what we measured right here. So we measured that when the probes were placed in this direction, and also when I measured the other direction as well. So that's how I measured it in diode mode. Now I did this for all of these secondary dual diode packages and they were all good. So there's no shortage on our secondary output rails and our secondary diodes are testing good. We've no shorts on the secondary power rails. However, this does not mean that our diodes here are fully working. It could be the case that they're not shorted but maybe one of the diodes in these two diode packages is open circuit because these are one of the components that you would say in a switch mode power supply that are under stress so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take out all of these diodes and test them all there's also another dual diode here um, I know my 5 volt standby is good so I don't think there's any reason to take this out so just these here these two are on our 5 volt rail and this one is on our 12 volt rail so just as an example I'm going to show you how I tested this one so I desolder this one from the circuit and it looks something like this so it's one of these TO220 packages I think so it says on the tin what it does we have three pins we between here and here we have one diode and between here and here we have a second diode so how do we check this and make sure that it's okay well we set the multimeter once again to diode mode and just measure the two diodes so I place my red probe here and my black probe right here and when I measured between these points I got 0 0.066 volts and then just simply swapping over to measure the second diode, I measured 0 0.066 volts also. So the two diodes in this package are both looking good. Just one thing I want to point out. One thing that some of you might have noticed is that 0 0.066 volts that I'm measuring across this diode are very similar to what we were measuring earlier when we measured the voltage rail and diode mode. So as you can clearly see what is happening here is when I have my red probe down here and my black probe to here sorry let me move my red probe here so my red probe to ground and my black probe to where my 12 volt wire comes in what path is it taking? well if you look at it here it's coming up around to my ground here through my diode across this path here and then back to my black probe so we're essentially taking the same measurement as we've just taken across this diode right here. But now, by taking this out of circuit, we've confirmed that both of the diodes are good. Whereas what, when we're measuring here, if one of these diodes was open circuit, I would still measure 0 0.066 volts. I hope that's clear. I'm sure a few of you are probably screaming at the screen at this point saying why isn't he taking out the electrolytic capacitors on those voltage rails and testing them. But they look pretty good to me and I did test a couple of them and they're all testing fine. So I don't think that's where the problem lies either. Of course you're welcome to make suggestions down below as to why I would be better to do this or that for any 
you know any of my troubleshooting procedures here I'm here to learn as well but at this time I think it's probably better that I move on to testing the feedback section there is a feedback section that samples uh, at least one of these output voltages and sends it back to the power IC through an optocoupler and that can go wrong and cause it to shut down as well so I'm gonna cut this video short right here what we've done in this video is to replace the power IC and that didn't do anything we've checked the voltage rails for shorts on the secondary side and there's no shorts there and I've also verified that all of the secondary diodes are good so we have made some progress here and we're gonna move on to the feedback section in the next video if you think I should go somewhere else Tell me where I should go next down below in the comments. Thanks and I'll see you in the next one.